bought my first house that I currently still live in two years ago. I was in the unpacking and settling in phase. At the time, I was single and living alone, but I just figured it was time for a house. I had a couple friends over to help me unload the truck full of boxes, and I paid them with food since they wouldn't accept money. They hung around for a few hours after just to hang out. When my friend Dale went to the bathroom, he came back and said he heard some noises from inside the walls and that it sounded like there were some pipe issues. I took note of it, and the two of them left a little later. Since it was a Saturday, I stayed up pretty late on my laptop watching Netflix. However, I was hearing some light thumping sounds from above me, which was odd because my bedroom is upstairs. The only thing that could be above me would be the attic. Then I remembered Dale's comments about the noises from inside the walls. I went to the attic door and pulled it down, and I actually had to take a deep breath because I was a bit nervous. I climbed the stairs into the attic and pulled the light switch down. One very dim yellow light buzzed on, just barely lighting up the attic. The noises in the wall stopped though. Either that or the noises just weren't coming from the attic I imagined. With no boxes up there yet, it was just basically a big empty space and I could clearly see no one was up there. The only things in the entire attic were a couple giant framed paintings leaning on one of the walls. I went back down to my room and tried to get some sleep, but I heard the noises again. Now I started to fear there was a small animal on the walls, like a raccoon. The sound still seemed to be coming from directly above my room. It had to be in the attic. So once more, I went up into the attic and looked to where I thought would be directly above my bedroom. The thing is, the attic didn't seem to extend the entire length of the house, so there's a wall covering where the section above my room should be. I walked over to the wall just to listen for potential noises, and I did hear noises from the other side of this wall. Then I looked at the two paintings leaning on the wall, how they were slightly angled. My heart started to race. I walked to the paintings and slightly angled one upwards off the wall, revealing a big hole in the wall. It took a few seconds for the reality to sink in. As I held the painting at an upright position, the painting was suddenly pushed out of my grip to fall flat on the floor. I nearly had a heart attack. Out from the hole came this sickly looking girl. She seemed to be high on something. She was shaking, making weird noises, and she would start this creepy laughing. She grabbed onto me and dug her nails into my shoulders so hard I screamed, and I pushed her as hard as I could off of me. She fell backwards into the secret room, and I ran to the exit and shut the attic door behind me. I locked myself in my room as I called the police and reported that a crazy dangerous person was in my attic. Cops arrived within five minutes. Three cop cars ended up pulling up, and there were a total of five police officers in my house. Four of them went into the attic, and I heard the struggle. The girl screamed like a creature, and it sounded like she was trying to attack the officers, which led to her getting tased. They finally managed to get her in cuffs and carry her out of the attic and outside to one of the cars. The girl had to be like anywhere from 25 to 35 years old, but like I said, she looked sickly. While the officers were still in the house, I went into the attic to examine the secret room. Inside was a pile of blankets, a dirty pillow, a lot of food wrappers, and human waste in one corner. It seemed as though this girl had been up there for a long time. It was truly a nightmare to discover this on my first night in my new house. The girl was taken to a nearby psychiatric center to get her the help she needed. My dad helped me buy my first house when I was 28. I was never spoiled, but my dad always had a lot of money, and when I wanted a house, he lent me a large amount of cash. The previous owners of the house were an elderly couple. As far as I know, the husband died many years before I moved in. The wife died just a few weeks before I bought the house. The son of the couple who sold me the house kept a lot of the furniture in the house for me, and he took only what he really needed or wanted, which made things easier for me, less furniture to buy. I did dump some of the more outdated stuff on the curb though, including this old rocking chair that was sitting in the living room. A lot of the furniture just had an older, creepy vibe that I didn't want in the house. The next day, I was cleaning out more junk in the upstairs section of the house for most of the day. A lot of it was heavy lifting, so I'd take breaks in between, and this ate up most of the day. 
I didn't really get an ounce of sleep the night before, as I have a mild form of insomnia which affects me certain nights. That second night, having moved into the house, I went out to get some Chinese for dinner because I had no energy to cook. When I got back, I was disturbed to find the front door was unlocked. Now I truly don't remember if I had simply forgotten to lock it or not. I wanted to believe I forgot, but it just seemed so unlikely I'd forget to do that, especially with my brand new house. I started flicking on every light of every room on the main floor. The more light, the safer I'd feel. I then proceeded up the stairs to do the same there, in the common area and in all three bedrooms. There was also a basement to the house that I'd only been down inside once at that point. It was not a big basement like you would expect though. It was kind of just a small storage space where the washer and dryer happened to be. I was already feeling a lot more confident that I had just simply forgotten to lock the door, but I still had to check the basement before I could confirm this. I opened the basement door and I flicked on the light. As I got halfway down the stairs, I saw an old rocking chair sitting in the middle of the basement. I didn't remember it being there the first time I saw the basement, and when I stood over it, I could swear it was the same rocking chair I had thrown away the night before, if not the same one, at least an identical one. I looked around the basement though and there wasn't anyone down there, so I did calm down just a bit. I headed back upstairs to eat my Chinese food. I remember leaving the basement door cracked open though, which sat right next to the kitchen, and I started hearing rickety creaking sounds from downstairs. I ran to the basement door and I tried to turn on the light, but it wouldn't turn on this time. All I could think was, what the hell was that noise? I went to the kitchen to grab my flashlight from under the sink, and I went a quarter of the way down the stairs with the flashlight beaming down to the bottom, and I saw the rocking chair moving, and someone was sitting in it. It was an old woman with gray curly hair, glasses, and she was dressed in a pink nightgown. Her head slowly turned to be looking up at me. I gasped and left the basement, closing the door this time. I don't know what I was immediately thinking at that point. All I knew was I had to call the police, but when they came, they searched the whole basement with me and we didn't find anyone. There were also no hidden compartments or exits down there where she could have escaped through. At a certain point, the cops started looking at me like I was crazy, I knew it, and pretty soon they left. I had the contact details of the son of the couple who owned the house before me, so I called him up around 8 or 9 p.m. and described the lady to the best of my ability. He sounded shook and started to cry over the phone and said I just perfectly described his mother and her favorite nightgown. He said he'd be right over. He got to the house within the hour and we went downstairs together. He seemed to be in shock the whole time, I could see his hand shaking. He ended up leaving with the rocking chair after a while of talking with me and being very emotional. It may have been emotional for him, but it was the scariest thing I could have possibly ever witnessed with my own eyes. It still stands to be. I kept the basement door locked 24-7 after that, and I'd be scared to do laundry for months. But after half a year of nothing happening, it wasn't that bad. I only lived in that house a year and a half though. When I was 12 years old, my family moved to a new house in the countryside of Louisiana, located near a small village. We'd always live in rural areas, definitely grew up unfamiliar to the city lifestyle or anything even remotely close to that. The property was three acres and very private. On the second night at the house, our dog Parker, who would sleep in my room, started barking and growling in the middle of the night. When he saw that I sat up in my bed, his tail started wagging, but he'd continue to bark and growl. I couldn't tell what he was looking at though, he was just looking towards the corner of the room. I checked the closet and nothing. So I told Parker to shut up, and he did. But I did keep hearing him lift his head off his bed every once in a while, reacting to something. The next day, an older man came and knocked on the front door. My dad answered while I was in the living room watching cartoons. I heard the whole interaction. The old man introduced himself as Gene, the next door neighbor. My dad told me to come over and introduce myself, so I did. Gene seemed very kooky and aloof. Even my 12-year-old self could realize that, but he seemed nice, I guess. The next day, I was in the backyard playing Pokemon on my Game Boy. My dad was in the front of the house mowing. The rest of my family wasn't home. 
Oddly enough, over walks Jean wearing the farmer's hat and overalls, talking to me in his thick southern accent, asking what I was up to. He actually sat down at the table with me, which made me uncomfortable, especially considering he just walked into our backyard. Albeit there was no fence separating the front and backyard, but still. I told him I was playing Pokemon, and he knew what it was, immediately making Pikachu noises trying to be funny, but it was just unsettling. I started to realize there really was something off about this guy. My dad came to the backyard with a lawnmower, then turned it off when he saw Gene sitting next to me. He approached us and said hello with a smile, but I could tell based on my dad's face and tone that he was slightly confused what he was doing in our backyard. He never asked him that, but my dad told me I needed to go inside and wash the dishes. I knew he was trying to get me away from him. A few minutes later, my dad came in and asked me if Gene just walked into our yard, and I said yeah. That's when he told me he didn't want me around that guy anymore, and to let him know if I saw him again. It wasn't until a few nights later that I woke up to Parker growling and barking again. This time he was looking at the window. I got up to open the window just to hear if something was going on out there. Quickly after opening the window, without seeing anybody out there, I heard Gene imitating Pikachu noises again in his creepy old man's voice. I ran out of my room screaming dad repeatedly. When I told my dad Gene was outside my window, he stormed outside to check. But when he couldn't find him on the property, he went to Gene's house next door. But here's the twist. That Gene guy didn't live next door. An older woman answered the door and had no idea who he was. So my dad went to every single neighboring house and nobody had ever heard of a Gene. My dad called the police to report the man. Police said they would be on the lookout for him and it even made the news. We never again saw or heard from Gene or whatever his real name was.